Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this week's classic episode of Angler West. This week we're going to Vancouver Island, British Columbia to fish out of Winter Harbor for some amazing halibut lingcod, rockfish, and salmon. Now I think this was the first episode that I filmed up there and since then I've filmed maybe 15 or 16 more episodes and a lot of those are available on the Angler West YouTube channel. So please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Now at the time we were fishing out of Qualicum River's Winter Harbor and now They've structured things a little differently so it's not a full service lodge. You can still rent boats and go out for a day with their captains, which is great, but it's not a full service situation. If you want a full service lodge at Winter Harbor, always is the place to go. Now, let's go back in time to Winter Harbor and see some amazing fishing. Here's a nice Winter Harbor halibut. On the northwest corner of British Columbia's Vancouver Island hides Winter Harbor a once busy commercial fishing center, but now home to only about 10 year-round residents. Plus, Qualicum River's Winter Harbor Resort, newly constructed from the bare bones of a commercial fish processing plant. Qualicum River's Resort offers not only very comfortable and clean accommodations and excellent meals prepared by a talented chef, but also access to some of the most outstanding salmon, halibut, lingcod, and rock cod fishing found anywhere in the Northwest or Alaska. With over a dozen boats, Qualicum Rivers has an unmatched fish catching and fish processing operation that can more than handle the large limits brought in daily by the lodge's guests. I'd say it's a pretty consistent average catch. That's, that's basically what we do up here in Winter Harbor. It's, uh, if your tides are right and you happen to have the nice weather, the good weather to, to do it, you're, this is pretty well average. We've had, uh, we've had some catches come in there with three guys in the boat over a thousand pounds. And that's, that's a good catch. This one here averaged about 600, 600 pounds of uh, halibut. And you got a 48 pound ling and uh, a few other smaller lings there and yellow eye. A day of fishing at Qualicum Rivers Resort starts at gray light after a good breakfast. Each party of two or three guests joins their assigned guide in one of the lodge's fully loaded aluminum fishing boats and heads out of Winter Harbor towards the open ocean, where the day could likely bring them the catch of a lifetime. Looking at the calm water inside of protected Winter Harbor, it's easy to assume that the open ocean will be so kind. On this day, however, high winds and big water change our mind about trolling for Chinook salmon and force us inside to go after the wily coho. They have come off. Either that or swimming right to the boat. Oh, he's on there. That small coho. And that was with a Mac deep just right on the surface. About 60 yards behind the boat. No. Beautiful. Well, we peaked outside this morning. It was pretty rough out there. So we're inside the lighthouse, which is protected waters. And it's, it's loaded right now with coho. So we're going to fish this a little bit for some coho. What I did with this one, this is a Mac Deep. We just run this one right on the surface, about 60 yards behind the boat. Some krill gel on there. And hopefully it'll catch us another fish. It was out there for about two minutes the last time. We got a nice eight, nine pound coho. Here we go. That didn't take long. Is that another coho? Yeah, it sure looks like it. Came right to the top. Oh yeah. Not happy. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Well, we've got two fish in about 10 minutes. So even when the weather's bad, you can still fish inside, get your coho, and there's some, there's some great uh, rock piles that you can jig a uh, rock fish off of. So we're gonna fish this another little bit for the silvers, probably do some lunch, and then go out and get some rock fish. The inside refers to Quatsino Sound, where the rockfish are plentiful, but generally smaller than those found outside in deeper water. But around here, you never really know what or how you will catch your next fish until it comes over the rail. Steve hooked a small lingcod and this larger lingcod, which is a beautiful lingcod, 
had it in its mouth, this big link cod was never hooked. It never had a hook in it. It just wouldn't let go of the small link cod. We brought it up and our guide Bill gaffed it. Uh, so we're going to let the small link cod go and we're going to keep the big link cod, which I'm going to guess is close to 30 pounds. On another day, the wind settled down and the Pacific Ocean laid down like an old dog, giving us access to the schools of feeding Chinook salmon, or springs, as the locals call this prized food fish. This is a great uh, spring chinook salmon. And the cool thing with this is we're going to get just a ton of fish uh, during the three or four days that we're up here. Uh, well, since we're driving here, we can haul all our fish back. We don't have to worry about the airlines and baggage and overweights. You just bring four or five huge coolers and you're pretty well guaranteed to fill them all up. So we're going to get back at it and catch a few more of these. Now, this is a hoot tree fishery because if we were using bait up here, there's so many dogfish in the water, they just eat you right up. So all we're using is a hoochie. We put some beads inside of it to keep it full and just a single point hook on it. We're going over some kind of bait fish here. I'm not sure what it is. The anchovy or here. Looks like a pretty good pile of it. Sometimes they come up out of this depth and you don't get much fight out of them right away, but this guy's finally starting to get a little bit excited, but I don't, I think it's a rockfish. I think we got a cod. A little wing cod? Little link cod. You can see this link cod was going after the sushi, and uh, actually a lot of uh, the commercial uh, fishermen for link cod, uh, troll flashers and hoochies for link cod, get somewhere down near the bottom, a link cod will come right up and uh, take these baits. So, so anyway, uh, we're gonna get this guy off and send him back, let him grow up a bit. What's, what's pretty important is when you're out here fishing, after a couple of fish, to always check your leaders. And we just reeled in a link cod and it, and it roughed up the leader pretty bad. So I'm going to tie up a couple of new riggins. And we're using the P-line. This stuff is great. It's, it's, it's invisible down in there, so you won't see this at all. It, uh, we're going to run them at about 52 inches. This feels like a piece of fish, too. It's definitely a salmon. It feels like a good fish. Oh, yeah, that's a nice fish. Pretty fish, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. See how black? Translucent, but they're black. The fins are black. Down in Oregon, by the time they get down to us, these fins go white and translucent. But this is a really pretty fish, and it's gonna eat really, really well. It was a fantastic day of chasing down our limit of springs, and all before lunch. I even had the chance to catch my own, and I know the lodge's other guests were having a great day as well. Welcome back to Qualicum Rivers Winter Harbor Resort, located on the remote northwestern corner of British Columbia's Vancouver Island. Definitely a hot spot for catching fantastic food fish like rock cod, lingcod, salmon, and halibut. We had a, we had a good day today. Uh, we limited out in halibut, and I just, you know, I fished, I've 
fished all over the Northwest and uh, Alaska and uh, a lot of places. And I'll tell you, uh, this is unbelievable here, the, the service you re we received and the, the food and the, the lodging, everything. And they make you feel real important. And the fishing is unbelievable. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, anybody wants to, some fine fishing and come to Winter Harbor. Uh, there isn't any place in the, in the Northwest that I know of that can compete with them. It's, it's just unbelievable. It's day two. There's a nice fog on the water, so the oceans have settled down. We're going to head up north about 20 miles and do some halibut fishing. Uh, we're going to go up in the channel. It should be pretty good. The ocean's flat. be most of the day. It takes about an hour and a half to get out there. We'll fish about six hours and an hour and a half to get in or so. It should be good. Here we go. Man, I had it halfway up, too. This is a medium-sized halibut, probably 60, 70 pounds. Oh, I would be absolutely tickled pink if we had about six more of those. This is a 20 aught circle hook and it looks like it would never catch a fish, but the idea of it is when the fish eats this bait, or eats the bait with this hook in it, and it comes out, it slides into the corner of their mouth, and then this hooks in like that in the corner of their mouth. And it's just such a solid hook that they never come out. It's the hardest part of the fish's mouth. It's exactly where you want to hook it, right there. 250 pound liter. This is a setup for big halibut, and it works. The trick to fishing for halibut is to anchor up and create a scent trail that schools of halibut can detect in the current from miles away. Of course, adding highly attractive scents such as Procure's butt juice will only add to the effectiveness of this scent trail. It may take a while for the first halibut to follow the trail to the boat, but once they do, they're not shy about taking the bait. A gap is sometimes used to manage the larger halibut that can be quite a bit larger than this medium-sized fish. And it's definitely wise to let the experienced guides handle bringing the fish on board. While halibut fishing, you're likely to catch other species as well. And this can be a good thing because fish like this yellow eye are great eating. Yesterday, because of the weather, we fished in the bay and we caught some juvenile yellow eye. And today we're outside fishing 300 foot of water for halibut. And uh, these big, beautiful yellow eye are an incidental catch. And uh, fortunately, they're a really good eating incidental catch. So uh, pretty excited about getting them along with our halibut. It's another good day on the open ocean, and today we're bouncing down south of Winter Harbor to an area that our guide Bill has confidence in for big ling cod and halibut. With big lings in mind, Bill has brought his jig box. Yeah, it's a 10 ounce glow-in-the-dark jig, or tail, scampi tail, and uh, we're going to spear it with some super gel and send it down, and uh, hopefully we can jig up some big ling cod. Uh, Biggest one we got here last year was uh, 67 and a half pounds. So that was a monster lingcod, and uh, hopefully we can find one of his uh, direct uh, descendants. We're about 140 feet of water, and we're going to use a salmon head and possibly catch a halibut, maybe a lingcod, but probably my guess is we'll catch a halibut with this bait. You just slowly let it down until it hits bottom. It's pretty rocky in here, so we want to hit bottom and bring it up about two cranks and that'll put the scent just floating along the bottom and hopefully they'll come up and grab it and run. I think this is our first lingcod and it's on the jig covered in sardine super gel which is one of my bottom fishing favorites. I know there's no sardines up here but they don't seem to know that. He's just peeling the line off of here buddy. This is definitely a lingcod. Oh, it could be a halibut. Maybe. Huh? Cool. Halibut will bite jigs, but this time it turned out to be just one of our daily limit of good-sized lingcod. But around here, you just don't know what's coming over the rail next.
Yeah. Looks like I've got a late caught too. We got more action going with the jigs than we have the bait this morning. Whatever this is, it's a nice fish. Yeah. The line feels pretty good too. Here's the thing we do with Calvin. Here. I don't know uh, where the hell it's got the rest of them in his gut or if it's uh, maybe come off. I don't know where it came from. It came from a real unhappy octopus. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a bonus, huh? Nice link cod. <laughs> doing very good using bait so this morning I, I went up to what Phil was using using a jig the sardine super gel and that's two halibut in about 20 minutes we just put in the boat. Two real big beautiful halibut. Today they want a jig. Wow. Wallacom Rivers has outstanding fish processing capabilities. All fish are cleaned and iced down immediately, and then each guest can choose to either take their fish home whole or let the lodge handle the processing, which will give you vacuum sealed packages ready for your freezer. The lodge's icing facility can handle huge numbers of fish, and if managed properly, there should be plenty of fish in the future. It's so obvious we catch quite a few fish around this place. Some people might be worried about the conservation. Um, the halibut conservation here, we have about 9% of the total halibut quota is given to the sports fishing industry. Last year we used about 3% of that. The rest of it we sold back to the commercial industry and all of it went to halibut enhancement. Um, as far as the, um, the life of a halibut, uh, they have about a 70% survival rate after they reach about 12 inches long compared to about 3% of a salmon. So the, so the spawning rate and the survival of a, of a halibut is quite significant compared to salmon. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah, just a little bit. A couple of the best things about Colicum Rivers Resort here. Number one, you can drive to it, so you can haul all your fish back. You don't have to screw around with the airlines or worry about overweight. They just load your coos in your truck for you. Uh, the next best thing is you can get all your species of fish. You can get coho, you can get spring chinook, you can get your halibut, your lingcod, your yellow eye, and other sort of rockfish. And there's no other lodge that I'm aware of that has all that variety of fishing at one time. So I recommend hiding if you give these guys a call and come on down. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.